Hi, this is lecture 22. It carries on from the previous lecture and it's going to look at a simplified U value. So the wall that we're looking at is a double skin masonry wall with a full fill cavity. The external surface is covered in render and the internal finish is framed out with 50 millimeter battens and plasterboard. So it's a very simple example. And for this, we're going to ignore any cold bridges. We're going to ignore the bridging effect of the timber. This is really just so that we can see a very simplified example. If you were doing this in real life, you would consider all of those bridging elements. So one of the things we need to understand is where we're getting our information from and what standards do we need to achieve? And in Scotland, we have our own technical standards. They're different from the rest of the UK and they set out target U values. So we have values such as 0 0.18 for a roof, 0 0.22 for a wall, etc. And the second thing we need to understand for our example is our manufacturer's information. So for each layer, you should have a specification for real material that you can then research on the internet, find, for example, British gypsum, looking at standard wallboard, we can find thermal conductivities and thermal resistances for each material. And because it's a wall, we can start plugging information into our table. We can add in the external surface resistance. And the next layer that we have in our construction is an external render, and we have a thickness for that. Again, remember that's in meters. And we have a conductivity, but we don't have a resistance. And if you remember from the previous lecture, there is a simple calculation of R equals D over K to find out what the resistance is. So in our case, we have 25 millimeters of external render and we have a conductivity of 0.5, which gives us a value of 0 0.05. So we can add that into our calculation table. And each layer can be then added in with its corresponding thickness, conductivity and resistance. The one layer there that you'll notice is missing a conductivity is the unventilated air layer behind the plasterboard, which just has a standard value. And again, if you look back over last lecture, you'll understand why. So that gives us all of our resistances. We can then go to our U-value calculation, which is U equals one over the sum of all the resistances, which gives us a calculation which looks something like that. And if we perform that calculation, we get 1 over 3.532. So the resulting calculation works out to 0 0.283. Now when we're looking at a U-value calculation, we would round that to two significant digits. So if the number is above 1, it would be a whole number and a decimal place. If it's below 1, then it's two decimal places. So we would be rounding this to uh, two numbers. And Numbers 1 to 4 get rounded down, 5 to 9 get rounded up. So when we round this, it goes down to 0.28. So we can plug that into the bottom of our calculation and then check it against the target U values. We have to be lower than these values. So the lower the number, the better the performance of the wall. So we can see that our target U value is 0.22, whereas ours was 0.28. So we haven't met the standard. So the next thing you have to do is be able to go back through some of your materials, look for alternative specifications or different ways to design, and then recalculate and look to see if you can match this 0.22. So in conclusion, this example has been simplified significantly, so it doesn't take account of bridging elements, but it shows the basic principles of how to work out a U-value calculation. Each country or state will have its own target values for individual elements, and these should be thought about when working at an early stage of a design. The ability to quickly complete a calculation is a good way to check your design and adjust your wall thicknesses if required. So aspects that you should take from this lecture are that if completing a calculation by hand, it's easier to set it out in a table, that manufacturer's data should be used when completing the calculation, and that target U values should be referenced when designing, and finally, that calculation should be rounded to two significant figures. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, as always, please feel free to ask.